Well, you could have predicted this. It's every man for himself. The Podesta Group, two weeks ago, co-founder Tony Podesta stepped down from the company after sending us a letter threatening to sue us for mentioning his name on TV. There was speculation he could soon be indicted by the independent counsel, Robert Mueller. We're waiting to see if that's going to happen. Now Podesta's successor, Kimberly Fritz, has announced she is quitting to start her own firm. We were the first to report that the Podesta Group was at the center of Mueller's investigation after a source told us about the company's multi-year effort to lobby on behalf of foreign powers, including Russia-backed Ukrainian figures, without disclosing its status as a foreign agent, which it certainly was. Peter Schweitzer wrote the book Clinton Cash. He's an expert on Washington corruption and backroom dealing. He joins us tonight. Peter, are, are you surprised that the Podesta Group's revenues dropped dramatically after Hillary lost. Do you think there was a connection? Uh, yes, absolutely. Huge connection because lobbying is ultimately about access. Uh, you know, lobbyists will tell you, Tucker, you've heard it a million times, as if I know we're really hired for our expertise. Right. That's simply not the case. It's about access. So, yeah, the revenue is drying up, but there's also major, major legal problems uh, that the, the uh, Podesta group is facing. And I think Fritz made a very uh, a reasonable decision to abandon ship. So if you were one of Mueller's investigators, how would you be thinking about the Podesta Group? What would you be looking at? Well, you'd be looking at a couple of things. First of all, uh, the Podesta Group, really over the course of almost the last calendar year, has been amending their filings uh, in Washington, D.C., their lobbying records with the federal government. There's something called the uh, Foreign Agents Registration Act, FARA, right. set up in the 1930s, uh, basically to uh, counteract Nazi propaganda efforts in the United States. If you do work for a foreign political party or a foreign government, you're required to disclose that and register it. The Podesta Group did not on numerous occasions, not just related to Ukraine. And so they've been amending those filings over the last year. It's a little bit too little too late. So they're going to face some real challenges there, particularly because now we know that this is what Paul Manafort is being charged with. Right. Um, if they're going to be consistent, you're, you're charging Manafort, you're going to have to charge Podesta as well. You, so you certainly um, think those so. are the kinds of things you're looking for. So, but, uh, but I don't understand. So you're required by federal law to register if you're lobbying on behalf of a foreign government. But then the Podesta Group never bothered to do that. And then years later, after the group on whose behalf they were working disbanded, doesn't even exist anymore, they register retroactively? How is that legal? <laughs> Can I do that with my taxes? <laughs> It'd be great if we could, isn't it, Tucker? I mean, look, here's, here's the issue. The foreign governments will try, as in the case of the Ukraine, for example, they'll funnel it through a third party. There was this European-Ukrainian uh, foundation that the Ukrainian government, Yanukovych government, funded, and then they paid. That doesn't change the fact that the government paid for it. Um, so they are trying now to, in a sense, cover up the fact and say, no, it was foreign registration. We're now complying with the law. This is not a law that unfortunately has been enforced all that much in the past. I think that's a huge mistake. In the case of Manafort and in the case of Podesta, we ought to enforce those laws because these laws require greater disclosure. If you're lobbying for a foreign government, you're required to say who you met with specifically, on what date, exactly what you talked about. And we deserve, as citizens, to know who these hired guns are when they're working for foreign governments. The most powerful lobbies in Washington are not registered under FARA. And I find it a little bit disingenuous. You see these members of Congress jumping up and down about how the Russians hacked our election and foreigners are really determining the course of our democracy. And yet they're not even enforcing the laws on the books. Why is that? That's a great point. And that's, that's I think, one of the real problems in Washington, D.C., Tucker. You and I have talked about it for years. Uh, business as usual in Washington uh, oftentimes spill over, spills over into, frankly, illegal activity. Yeah. Uh, and they don't want to police themselves. And it's time for that to change. And people like Trump, people don't like Trump. The fact of the matter is the disruptive effect of Trump coming into Washington is a lot of these issues are being exposed and should be exposed. And hopefully we're going to start using the, the teeth of the law to bite into some of these people. That yeah, needs let, to be done. That's exactly right. Let's take this Russia thing seriously. You say a foreign government is influencing policies in the United States. OK, let's take a close look at which foreign governments are doing that. No one wants to do that, I notice. Peter, thank you very much for your expertise on this. Thanks, Dr. Be better.